Hello and welcome to Tanya Jane English. I'm Tanya and today I have a listening exercise to share with you. There are a few tricks I want to share with you first about listening to English on YouTube. If you're having difficulty understanding, then there are a couple of things you can do to make that easier. Just below here you'll see a little box with two C's in it. If you click on that box, you can put the subtitles on the screen while I'm speaking. In next to that, there's a little gear. It looks like a circular thing. If you click on that, you can choose what type of subtitles you want. I suggest that you use the English subtitles. Sometimes when you read along as I speak, it will make it easier for you to understand. Using subtitles in your native language is not recommended. It makes it difficult for your brain to go back and forth from English to your native language. Another thing you can do is to slow down the speed of the video. In that same little icon, the circular gear, you can click there and it will say speed and you can choose a slower speed. There are a couple of different speeds you can choose from and hopefully that will help you to understand too. Make it your goal to understand this video at normal speed. You could watch it once with the subtitles. You could try slowing it down. And then you could try watching it at the normal speed with or maybe without the subtitles. In listening to it two or three times, it will help you to improve your listening skills and to add vocabulary. So let's get right into the subject for today. Today I'm going to share with you a few of the differences between British English and American English. Last year, at the end of last year actually, I visited England for the first time. And I was surprised at the differences between American English and British English. Of course, all my life I knew they had that wonderful accent that everyone here, or maybe not everyone, but a lot of people here in America love the British accent, and I'm one of them. But a lot of other things were different as well. They used different vocabulary especially, and some different phrases. So I'm going to share five or six of the differences that I saw when I first went. So the first one is something that is very commonly said in England is the phrase bloody well. They use this phrase to emphasize what they're saying. In the United States, we do not use this phrase. So the difference might be in England, you might hear someone say, I'll bloody well do it if I want to. Now, in the United States, we might say the same thing, but we would not say bloody well. You won't hear someone say that here, unless, of course, they're visiting from England, or maybe they've moved here from England. Or maybe they're a, a fan of British English, and they've picked that up along the way. But it's very uncommon to hear an American use this phrase. If we want to put emphasis on the phrase, I'll do that if I want to, we'll just use voice tone and, and um, pardon me, we'll just use voice tone and volume to change the emphasis. So for instance, we might say, I'll bloody well do that if I want to. You can see that it has a similar effect, probably not exactly the same. I'm sure there are many ways that other Americans would change this phrase to put more emphasis on it. We'll talk about that more in an upcoming video. Another word that they say differently is Q, different from our line. When we say we're going to wait for something, we wait in a line of people. There's several people in the line. In England, they say Q. There's several people in the Q. So an example I might say to someone here in the United States, how many people are in the line, meaning I have to wait after all of these people. In England, they would say, how many people are in the queue? 
Of course, they'd use that fabulous accent, which I'm terrible at. I might try it here in a minute. We'll see. Okay, another one is the difference between rubbish and trash. In the United States, we say trash. In England, they say rubbish. What we mean by trash is something we're going to throw away, something we are not going to keep. We'll throw it away. We throw away our trash. We also call the bin in which we throw it the trash. So both things are the trash. I'm going to throw this trash in the trash. Or how much trash is in the trash? We usually wouldn't say it twice like that. I'm using that as an example so that you can understand. But we would say, where's your trash? I need to throw this away. Or, I have this trash. Where can I put it? Either way, it could be either of those. Now, in England, they would say rubbish. Do you have any rubbish? Or, I need to throw this rubbish away. And you might have to think about that. In English, they call trash the rubbish. It's a little different than what we say here. Another one is elevator or lift. In England, they say lift. In the United States, we say elevator. What we mean by these words is the little room in a tall building where you go and you push the button and the doors open up and you can walk inside and push another button and it will take you up to one of the higher floors. You'll usually find this in a tall building, sometimes a building that only has two or three floors, depending on if it's a very public building or not. And we would say something like this, where's the elevator? Or how many people were in the elevator? In England, they would say, where's the lift? Or how many people were in the lift? So it's a little different, especially if you're asking for something. For instance, when I was there, if I would say, where is the elevator? Some people knew that that was the word we use in the United States, and some people didn't. So it's a little bit confusing, but really not that big of a deal. All right, another difference is what we call in the United States the trunk, the trunk of our car. It's behind your car, in the back, I should say, in the back of your car. There's a place where you can lift the hood and put your luggage or your groceries in the trunk of your car. In England, they say the boot. This one doesn't cause a lot of trouble for traveling and that kind of thing. It's just one of the differences that I noticed. And then the last one I'm going to share with you today is where is the bathroom or the restroom? This is how we say it in the United States. In England, they say the toilet. This was probably the most challenging for me when I first arrived in England because I would go in a restaurant or a store and I would say, may I use your bathroom or may I use your restroom? In the United States, if we want to say it a little more politely, we say restroom but we would be equally understood if we said bathroom, either one. In England, they looked at me kind of funny, like they didn't know what the bathroom or the restroom was. So I would say, may I use your restroom? And they'd look at me and say, what? May I use your restroom? Restroom, they'd say. And I'd say, bathroom? Bathroom, they'd say. And then usually someone around us would hear what we were saying and say, oh, they mean the toilet. And so I learned to say, where is your toilet? Now, I have to say it was a little odd for me because in the United States, I can't imagine saying, where's your toilet? It would be just a little bit rude. I'm not sure if rude is the word. It would just not be... It wouldn't sound like what we would say in the United States. It's a little uncomfortable. Now, that's not true for everyone in the United States, but for some people, that would be different. All right, I hope that these couple of differences, actually this would be a few, because a couple is two, and a few is three or more. 
I hope that these few things have been helpful for you. If this video was helpful for you, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe down below so you don't miss any more Tanya Jane English. I'll look forward to seeing you in another video soon. Bye.